As the seasons change, the moon lines up for some incredible views with the planets in the early morning sky, and we take a look at how you could possibly go out and take a picture of a faint, dim object moving through our solar system called the James Webb Space Telescope. Let's go outside and take a look at what you can see for March 2022. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Welcome to the Night Sky, a monthly series that walks you through the best things that you can see and image in the nighttime sky throughout the entire year. Whether you're a casual fan of space or have years or decades of experience in amateur astronomy, please like this video and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Also, if you're able to get out to see or image anything in the sky, please be sure to let us know how that experience was for you in the comment section below. Now, sadly, there are no major meteor showers to report on for the month of March. So we're gonna jump straight to the best views of our closest neighbor, the moon. Let's begin with the phases of the moon and then take a look at some lunar events coming up this month. The phases begin with the new moon, which will be on March 2nd. This is when the moon rises and sets with the sun, meaning that you really can't see it at all in the nighttime sky. Following that, we have the first quarter phase on March 10th. This is my favorite time to observe the moon with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, with the angle of the sunlight revealing a great wealth of detail on its surface. On the night of March 18th, the full moon rises to shine for the entire night, and the last quarter moon follows on March 25th. For our lunar events this month, I want to focus on a pretty incredible pairing of objects that's going to be occurring around 6.30 a.m. on the morning of March 28th. And that's going to be when the moon, Venus, Mars, and Saturn meet very close to each other in the early morning sky. My lunar observing challenge for you this month is to observe or image this beautiful matchup of objects in the early morning sky. Be sure to stop back by and let us know what your experience was like in the comments section below. And as always, feel free to tag me in your images on social media. Let's move deeper into space by taking a look at the best views of the planets of our solar system for the month of March. We'll begin as we always do with our closest planet to the Sun, Mercury. It's going to be a tough early morning target this month and is going to be pretty much impossible to observe for most of the time. It does make a close approach to Saturn on March 2nd, but other than that, you're not going to get much out of this planet this month. Venus, however, continues to dominate the morning sky and is a wonderful target for the naked eye, binoculars, or a telescope. Mars and Earth continue on their close approach to each other later this year, with Mars rising higher into the southeast sky as the month goes on. This still is not the best time to observe or image Mars, but it's becoming a better and better view with each day as we get later into the year. Jupiter is still too close to the Sun for any views of it right now, but Saturn continues to quickly rise in the southeast for better views throughout the month. Your best views of Uranus are going to be in the west right after sunset, but Neptune, like Jupiter, is just too close to the Sun to see this month. My solar system observing challenge for you this month is to get up early and go out and take a look at the dance of planets that's going on in the early morning sky. Specifically focusing on Venus and Saturn, which are going to be moving at a pretty incredible rate from our perspective from how they change from morning to morning. If you're able to get out and see them, please be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Comets and asteroids are in most cases going to require a pair of binoculars and a telescope to go out and see and enjoy. And be sure to temper your expectations when it comes to these solar system targets. We're so used to seeing the beautiful long exposure images of some of the more impressive comets in particular over the past few decades, 
But more often than not, these are gonna be faint fuzzy objects or dim pinpoints of light moving across the background star field of deep space. For March, Comet 19P Borelli travels through the Perseus constellation for most of the month with a nice opportunity for astrophotographers coming up on March 27th when it makes a close approach to the California Nebula. As for asteroids, your best bet is going to be viewing Ceres through a telescope as this dim pinpoint of light moves across the background field of space through the constellation Taurus. Now, while we're on the topic of solar system targets, I, I couldn't help myself in adding this to the list. I saw recently that the app that I use to track things in the nighttime sky, Sky Safari 7 Plus, has an update that added the James Webb Space Telescope to its catalog of objects. Now, this is not going to be something that you're gonna be able to see with a telescope, but it is possibly something that you could image seeing a faint, dim pinpoint of light using long exposure astrophotography in some cases. If you own the Sky Safari app, open up settings, go to the solar system section, and scroll down until you update minor body objects. Once that's done, you can center the object and it'll show you exactly where it's located if it's able to be seen in your sky. What I hope to do over the past several weeks if I can get some clear skies is to go up and set up my equipment to take some long exposure shots of the part of the sky where it should be. If I've captured it and if James Webb is bright enough what I could possibly see is a very dim object slowly moving across the field of view over several hours compared to the background stars of deep space. I'm going to give this a try. I'm not sure what the results are going to be, if anything, but I thought it was at least an exciting thing to share with you all, again, specifically for those of you who are into astrophotography. As we move out of our solar system, we're gonna be looking at the best constellations and deep sky objects for the month of March. Now this is a transition time in astronomy from the winter to spring sky for most of us. So that means that we're still gonna be focusing on the winter constellations and objects this month, and then we'll be sure to focus to the best spring targets coming up in next month's video. Always remember for these deep sky objects, that in most cases they're gonna require a pair of binoculars, a telescope, and dark skies to be able to get the best views of them. The constellations that are the most prominent right now in the nighttime sky are gonna be Orion, Monoceros, Gemini, Auriga, and Taurus. Within these constellations are some of the best deep sky objects that the nighttime sky has to offer right now. And again, because of the transition month that we're in, we're going to focus one more time on the gorgeous constellation Orion and take a look at what you can go out and see to observe or image before it begins to set and go away for most of the rest of the year. Go outside and look towards the southwest look up until you find the constellation Orion. After finding the three stars that make up Orion's belt, move down until you come across the gorgeous Orion Nebula. This entire area of space is incredible for visual observing and particularly astrophotography. From up close images of Orion's Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula, to wide angle images of the entire Orion constellation. With binoculars, a telescope, or imaging equipment, don't miss out on this constellation as it begins to set with the approach of spring. I'll be sure to leave a list of some more objects that I think are worth your time as we transition from winter to spring over on latenightastronomy.com. Be sure to check the description of this video for that article. Those are just some of the most impressive things that you can get out to see and image under the nighttime sky this March. 
If there's anything you think I've left off this list, please be sure to share that with us in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.